Coming up on the program, we're gonna harvest our cocktail onions and then decide what we're gonna put in behind them so we can continue growing. And we're going to take out the garlic and lettuce in this particular area and plant more fall lettuce. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored by the following. MIGardener.com, over 300 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents. MIGardener.com. Sue Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sue's, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull based potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit Sue Growing Supply Com. Stop before you dig. Call Diggers Hotline first. Call three business days before you dig. It's the law. It's completely free and it's for your safety. Know what's below before you dig. It's your responsibility. Call Diggers Hotline or visit them at diggershotline.com. HappyLeafLED.com. Commercial grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. No fans, no motors. Simply plug in and grow. Great for seed starting to lettuce to full grown tomatoes. All indoors. HappyLeafLED.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. Well, we're going to harvest some cocktail onions today. Now, cocktail onions is the term that we give them. They are about the size of uh, smaller than a golf ball. Uh, some of them haven't got to the mature level that I would like them to, but we're going to harvest them because they're ready. The tops have died off. There is some that are still growing. This is an ideal, to me, cocktail onion. We started these from seed back in January along with our Spanish onions, our red uh, ruby onions, all of our onions in Rootmaker one gallon grow bags. And we planted them in this makeshift raised bed just out of two by fours and a ring off the bottom of a swivel chair and the reason why we chose to do it that way to grow them in these particular uh, devices is because they don't need a whole lot of root depth and we are able to water frequently now if you were growing carrots or uh, parsnips or anything like that tomatoes peppers I would not put them in a three inch deep raised bed but with these onions it works fine so the onions you know are ready whenever these are, this goes for cocktail onions or large onions when the tops bend over and crimp at the junction or at the, the base uh, at the top of the, the bulb there. So we're going to go ahead and harvest these even though these are not as large but they are onions and we can cook with them and see they got nice roots in them for sure. So what the best way I know you're saying, well, I don't want to peel these. Well, these you don't necessarily have to peel. What works best is clean them up, cut the roots off, you know, chop the roots off, chop the top off, and you can just throw them in roast, or if you bake something in the oven, you can put them in the oven. And when they get heated up and cooked, you can just virtually squeeze them out of their skin and they work just fine. So I'm going to harvest these, which are on the small order. I'm going to harvest those in the round ring, and then we'll go to the back side of the garden. We've got some very nice ones, and then some that didn't do so well. So we harvested those up in the front in those raised beds, and you can tell <clears throat> that we had good soil because of the length of the roots uh, and a good foundation. They were, had a lot of roots. They're, they grew really well. We'll clean them up, they look really good. Uh, you know, that's small, but uh, that's what they are. They're not giant bulbing onions. This bed here got a lot of thistles in it. They, uh, we planted them and they kind of did okay, they kind of didn't. So uh, some of them have already kind of cured themselves. Tops off of that, roots off that, still edible. Uh, I got one back here, uh, about the same size there. So I'm going to harvest these, which is a disappointment. We're going to let this bed, we've got to figure out how to rework this bed. Uh, the disadvantage to this bed is the sun comes up in the east for sunrise to about noon, one o'clock. And this gets incredibly hot back here. And we've added compost, but it just, this bed just bakes incredibly uh, a lot. So we're going to have to figure out what we want to do to try to fix that or just eliminate this bed altogether, uh, something like that, because these, 
uh, did grow, but we just had a lot of difficulties. We've had a lot of difficulties with crops that we've grown in this bed simply because of that excessive heat that reflects off the side of the garage here. So I'm going to harvest these, then we'll harvest the largest ones we have in a nice container we have behind the garden shed. So this is our final bed, just in a plasticish styrofoam type of container here. And this is like the largest, oh, ripped the top off, okay. The largest bulb that we have. Now when you buy them in the store in the jars, they come in a variety of different sizes. A lot of them are on the smaller size. They're, those are the ones that are pickled. Uh, so what we've decided to do is we're going to harvest all of these and then minus the bed behind the shed there, this container and the ones up front, we're going to put beets in and utilize that because if we wait and plant radishes, we're going to, the radishes take 30 days to reach a mature state. So we would wait until later on in the fall. And I want to go ahead and use these beds for something. And since we're getting ample amount of rain on a regular basis, we won't have to be concerned, overly concerned with her, uh, watering the beets. Even if they're in that shallower container, I think we can still manage to get beets in a harvest by the end of the summer, which is a 70 day turnaround on that, as well as this one. So cocktail onions, they're not giant bulbing onions, but if you have a little space, you can cram a lot of these in. And this is our first year growing these, and we're definitely gonna grow them again next year in uh, conjunction with our large bulbing onions. There are many bad bugs in your garden, and one of them at the top of the list is what's called Japanese beetle. This is a flying insect that will eventually eradicate your plants, uh, eat the leaves. Uh, if you're sunflowers, bush beans, pole beans, they can come in and just devour a plant within no time at all. Now, there are some natural uh, ways and way to combat this. If you've got this problem, you can grow catnip, garlic, or chives around the plants that are most likely to be infected by the Japanese beetle. They are on this giant rose plant here, and you can see the devastation. They're starting to eat away at the leaves and pull, uh, just take big chunks out of it. You can also create a solution of soapy water and cooking oil and spray on the plant, and that will help get them off and, and sometimes kill them. What a lot of gardeners may try to use, and it's not recommended by us as organic gardeners, is a product called Seven. Now, Seven is a nerve toxin powder that they spread, it's a, a powder substance that is sprinkled on the plants and it gets ingested by these insects and it messes up their ne neurological systems and they die. Well, also, you have a neurological system too, and if you're breathing this in, even at small doses, it can hurt you uh, internally. So you want to avoid that. Now other people will take and choose to buy a pheromone trap where they will be attracted by the, the smell and they get trapped inside of the, the container at the bottom. Well this is fine and good but most times people will put that application in the center of their yard or garden. What does that do? That attracts all the Japanese beetles in the neighborhood to your particular location. If you choose to go that route with a pheromone trap, put it on the corner of your property so they're not coming into the center portions of your property. Put it on the corner, they can come to that corner and get trapped that way. So just some of the ways in which you can control, eliminate, and deal with Japanese beetles in your garden. So we've got this bed of romaine lettuce, red and green, that has gone or is going to seed. And then I've got uh, 20 bulbs of garlic roughly over here that I'm yet to get removed. I've left escape on one of these by accident. So we'll get that removed. This is kind of our extra bed here. We're behind a pine tree and this will serve a purpose here. With this romaine lettuce that we're removing, and the garlic we're moving, removing, we're going to put romaine lettuce back in to this bed and some butterhead lettuce. Now, I can re I'm going to revitalize the soil. It's not going to be a detriment to the plants by putting one on top, you know, planting two successions of crops that are the same thing. We do have garlic and the, the romaine. Now, the thing we learned about the romaine lettuce was we planted red romaine and green romaine. The red romaine, even up to the time of seeding 
it has a very slight bitterness taste. The green romaine has a terrible bitter taste. So this teaches us one thing, never to grow rom green romaine again. We're just gonna focus on the red romaine from now on and we planted far too much and we could let this all go to seed and save the seeds of the red romaine. We have some going to seed on the porch in, in a container that we're gonna save seeds on with these. We can sim simply put this in the compost pile and uh, be done with it. Or if you have animals, livestock, that would be what you could do with them. But there's a tip there. Red romaine doesn't get as bitter or goes to bitterness as quick as the green does. So, <clears throat> so I'm gonna get this all cleaned out, harvest the garlic, then we're gonna bring some Le uh, rom red romaine leaf lettuce in here, seedlings, uh, starts, and we'll get that planted for our fall garden. Now the advantage to having this pine tree behind us, the sun comes up in the east, sets in the west. That's the way it works here. During the hottest portion of the day, this pine tree shades this area and keeps the soil cooler, keeps the plants cooler, and kind of mimics like a shade cloth for our crops over here. So this would not work well if we're trying to grow peppers or tomatoes or something that likes that sun heat. So this is an advantage you can kind of take a look over your surroundings and see what works best in certain areas of your garden versus full sun in other parts. All right, so I've got the bed worked. Got all the weeds and the garlic and the old lettuce removed. We've got 12, heads of uh, 12 bulbs of garlic out of here. So now what I've come in to do is we're just gonna Revitalize the soil with some sustained fertilizer in the rows here, and I've got two varieties. I've got red romaine and the butterhead crunch lettuce that is real tender. And all we're gonna do is, uh, you can pack this in pretty tight. I'm gonna go about every six to eight inches. I'll start with romaine. You can just get your finger in there, pop it out. And you don't have to start these from you don't have to start starts and then put them in a tray and then transplant them. You can do this, just simply put a, a, a row in, sprinkle the seeds, cover it up. That's totally fine. We started these much earlier just to kind of get a jump start on the fall planting. And then uh, I would do a row, I'm gonna do a row of romaine and a row of butter crunch and a romaine. So I'm not inter, uh, mixing those two up. So they, uh, that's just the way I wanna do it. Now up against the fence here, we can utilize this fence for additional crops. I've planted blue lake pole beans along the fence. They're gonna crop the fence. And in addition, I plant the pole beans every four inches. And then in between those pole beans, I planted sugar snap peas. So I have two crops growing in one area and all those are gonna grow up the fence here. So we've got a little area here. Don't let your area, don't let your garden be empty. You can put something in it for fall. Thanks for joining me. Join me again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird, and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.